Okay, a set of two x-rays and can you tell which one is normal and which one is not? Of course you can. Uh, the x-ray on your right hand side is normal. We have seen this x-ray 50 times and there should be no problem in identifying a normal x-ray. And the x-ray on your left hand side is not normal. So what are the radiological features that make you think that this is not a normal chest x-ray? Tracheal deviation to right side, loss of right lung volume, so this uh, lung looks smaller as compared to the left lung, distorted anatomy on the right side, so this is distorted anatomy, this is how it should be and this is how it is right now, a triangular opacity at medial basal part of the right lung, visible part of the right bronchus, sharply tapers and if you look closely the azygos vein is pulled down inferiorly. This is uh, as it goes vein here on a normal chest x-ray and this is where it is on uh, this x-ray on your left hand side. Loss of normal cardiomedicinal contrast and let me show you a picture with normal cardiomedicinal contrast. So these are normal cardiomedicinal contrast and you can clearly see the normal cardiomedicinal contrast on right side are missing. Un usual shape of the right hemidiaphragm. This is left hemidiaphragm and this is right hemidiaphragm. And if it really is the right hemidiaphragm, then the medial third of the right hemidiaphragm is missing. So this is the medial third of the right hemidiaphragm on a normal chest x-ray, which clearly seems missing from here if this is a right hemidiaphragm. But keep my question in mind, which we will come back to later. And the question is that the right hemidiaphragm is really visible. Most people would say yes, this is this is right hemidiaphragm, and it looks raised, but it is there. But as I said, let's hold this debate for a minute and discuss it further. So, okay, yes, there is a distorted anatomy. There is a loss of right lung volume. Yes, the diaphragm is raised, but most features are inconclusive as they can be present in a number of conditions. But the most important clue and the diagnostic clue is this triangular opacity at the medial basal part of the right lung. This is a very typical presentation of right lower lobe collapse and all the other features mentioned become supportive of right lower lobe collapse in the presence of right medial basal triangular opacity. This of course includes the absence of medial third of the right hemidiaphragm. So what it means that whenever you see a triangular opacity in the in this area in the right medial basal area with loss of right lung volume tracheal shift you should instantly think of right lower lobe collapse. So what's now? Although at this point in time we can all be very happy and say yes, we have made a diagnosis and we can go home, but that does not satisfy our thirst for knowledge. So I guess it would be necessary to do some overtime and put some of some more efforts into understanding how these features are created. So this is uh, this is oblique fissure or major fissure. This is the location of oblique fissure and major fissure. And this is the location of horizontal fissure on the right lung. And if you look at the frontal x-ray, this is a rough location of the oblique fissure. This is upper lobe here and this below this fissure is lower lobe. So this would be lower lobe. The lower lobe would be somewhere here lower lobe would be somewhere here on, on left hand side. So the loss of right lung volume and the tracheal shift uh, in the features that we mentioned, they're very easy to explain. As a right lower lobe collapses, it decreases in volume and pulls the trachea towards the affected side. And the loss of loss of right lung volume is clearly because the right lower lobe is collapsing and shrinking in volume. So it shrinks the whole lung so the whole lung looks smaller. Right lower lobe collapses. So this anything behind this oblique fissure is the lower lobe. And we're talking about the right lower lobe only. So the right lower lobe collapses posteriorly and inferiorly and it as it collapses it pulls the horizontal fissure down as well. Okay on an AP view it collapses medially and the lateral 
edge moves far more posterior than the medial edge of the of the lobe and as a result the whole fissure gets rotated a bit and as a result the whole lung is rotated outwards so so that's why you can clearly see in the anterior mediastinum here and this is the posterior mediastinum here and the the trachea is shifted towards the right side and this oblique fissure this is oblique fissure that would normally not be visible at all because you're seeing it uh, from the front but because it is rotated it is rotated this way so you can see a border uh, that is created by the right by the by the medial part of the oblique fissure and that's what creates this uh, triangular opacity so most of the collapsed lung is here and some uh, collapsed lung is here right uh, collapsed right lower lobe is here okay so this is the collapsed right lower lobe and part of it is here this is superior vena cava and of course some part of the right uh, hard border is, is somewhere here okay so let's come back to the question is right hemidiaphragm really visible the answer is no if you did a CD scan uh, this is a CD scan from a different patient not from this patient but in this patient the right lower lobe is also collapsing so this is the right hemidiaphragm and this part is a part of the right lower lobe uh, this is right lower lobe this is the oblique fissure which is normally not visible it is only visible because the collapsing lobe is moving the oblique fissure towards anterior and towards the medial so this is oblique fissure this is this is horizontal fissure right horizontal fissure here so the right hemidiaphragm is actually if you look closely it's actually somewhere here it should be somewhere here this is left hemidiaphragm this is right hemidiaphragm here okay another chest x-ray that would uh, clear some concepts so this is another example this is the collapsing lobe here and this is right hemidiaphragm so whole this thing is collapsing right lower lobe and in this example you can also see the reason uh, that is actually causing the right lower lobe to collapse so there is a big mass in the right hilum this is superior vena cava again the whole right lung is externally rotated so this is the anterior mediastinum and this is the posterior mediastinum and uh, oblique fissure is visible here this is right hemidiaphragm okay a set of axial ct scan images and here you can actually see the reason the 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 thing that is causing the right lower lobe to collapse so there is a big mass in the right hilum this is right main bronchus and you can see this is left main bronchus okay so you can see there is a compression on the right side uh, again big mass here here some of it is the mass and some of it is the right lower lobe so this is collapsed right lower lobe this is oblique fissure which should be visible like this okay but because the lobe is collapsing it is pulling the whole uh, upper lobe medially and this this is airless collapsed right lower lobe okay 